Hello there Reason people, Pooh Bear here and welcome to my channel and today we're going to be looking at quick ways of setting up automation and modulation within Reason. Tip 1, on the rack extension you can right click and select edit automation. On a VST you have to select the automate at the top and then you can click on the appropriate parameter to get the modulation lane. On a rack extension you can also hold down the Alt key in Windows or the Option key in the Mac and just click on the parameters you wish and the automation lanes are created for you. In either case, Rack Extension or VST, you can hit the record and then just move the appropriate parameters and they are recorded for you. In the case of effects, they don't actually have a track lane, so even if I had record on, this is not going to happen. But of course, with the rack extension, you can right click, edit automation like we did before. We can also hold down the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac and click the control we wish and it will automatically create the track for us. And we can do automation that way. The other thing you can do on both of these is you can obviously right click them and create a track. For VST, you actually have to click on the VST interface where you can right click and create a track for it or you can actually click on the MIDI um, track selector and it will actually create a track for you. In the case of rack extensions which have a display, right clicking on them doesn't bring up the normal options what you're wishing to see to edit automation. However, if a track lane does exist for it, and in the case of this particular player, a track lane doesn't exist, so I can right click in that area and create a track or as I said before we can click on the MIDI track selector and it will actually create a track for you. From here you can now hit record and start recording one other useful method is actually down in the sequencer itself there's this little parameter button and from here you can get to all the automation parameters that a rack extension or a VST has. So if I was now to move on to this VST, you can see we can now get to all the controls for the VST. Please note on some VSTs, you might get to uh, see some parameters where they're totally blank. This is perfectly normal. It's more likely where they've used like a template to create that VST in the first place. Modulation. The most common device used to generate a signal for modulation is an LFO. There's many other devices and many other ways of creating that signal, but that's beyond the scope of this quick tutorial. So on the back of the rack, we're gonna take a CV out and we're gonna put it into a CV in. What you're gonna find on a, a quite a lot of rack extensions is there's this trim knob, and that will reduce the amount of signal which is going into the device. On the front of the device, you, where you actually set this parameter, that is known as the base value that the CV is going to be applied to. In the case of a VST, it's actually a two-stage process. First, you need to obviously connect up to a CV port on the back, and then you've got to assign what you're going to. So you have this drop-down list which you can go to, but my preferred method is to click on the learn and then we can actually move a parameter on the VST. We can also change the base value. And the, when I first saw this, I thought it was a left to right slider. It's not, it's an up and down. So you click it and you can go actually up and down to set the base value. Combinators. In my honest opinion, combinators are the second most powerfulest device within reason, the first being Thor. But we're talking about combinators. So under the show programming, this is where all the magic happens. And also on the back, as you can see, we've got some CVs in. We could also go straight from, say, an LFO into a rotary. So if you need more methods of getting the CV signal into a combinator, you can use the rotaries or the CVs in. The other real powerful thing 
about a combinator is the fact that you can actually program up to 10 slots and they could all be the same thing. So these all could be CV1. So I could have one uh, signal coming in and actually modulating up to 10 different parameters. And this is per device. So the same CV signals could access 10 other parameters on another device. And the other beauty about a combinator is you can have real lovely tight control over the ranges that you set. And as you can see here in this particular case, I've actually got it going from a higher value to a lower value rather than low to high. Even though it says min to max, you can swap these around. So this ends my quick tips on automation and modulation. Thank you for watching and bye for now.